Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending today's session. I'm Xinhua Chen, a PhD candidate in the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department in the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. So today, my topic is the construction and performance of a flexible and eco-friendly nanocellulose graphite-based pressure sensor for wearable applications. So my content is basically divided into these four. First, I will give a brief introduction to um, for you guys to better understand the research topic. And then I will uh, discuss the objective and the methodology of this study. And then I will move on to the preliminary results and then I will summarize everything. So first, I will give you an introduction to the uh, cellulose materials. So due to the environmental pollution um, that, that lead by the non-degradable plastic, uh, it is one of the most major crises globally. So renewable and green electronic devices have received a lot of attention in recent years for their environmental friendliness and sustainability. So um, as Professor Sun has mentioned previously, cellulose is one of the most inexhaustible sorts of raw materials for the increasing demand for environmentally friendly and biocompatible products. It is usually extracted from plants, including tree trunks, bamboos, cotton, sometimes even extracted from the bacteria. The structure is composed by a cellular microfiber bundle, and then it can be further divided into microfibrils and elementary fibrils. At a finer scale, these elementary fibrils assembled from repeated units of glucose through covalent bonding or intra or interchain hydrogen bonding. So the intrinsic structure of cellulose is important in performing certain functions. Uh, this natural polysaccharide possesses porous 3D fiber network with high aspect ratio, make them degradable and possible to uh, possess robust absorption characteristics. Also, the glucose provides abundant hydroxyl groups, which enable further chemical modification. This makes the fiber-based cellulose suitable for applications, including sustainable devices, biocompatible electronics, self-active sensing materials, and also flexible substrate content. So um, this study, we want to utilize cellulose and the composite materials for pressure sensing. So typically, there are two major working principles for pressure sensing. One is piezo-resistive type, and the other is the capacitive type. So piezo-resistivity is known as the electrical resistance change of materials caused by its structural deformation. Some consistent natural materials have been proven to have significant piezo-resistive effect. So when a force is applied on the piezoelectric pressure sensor, the total thickness of the piezoelectric materials decreases. This uh, leads to significant piezo uh, polarization degree increases, and the charges are induced significantly, and then lead to a potential change between the electrodes. So for the capacitive type, Commonly, when the sensor is compressed, its thickness decreased, and in also some cases, the area of the parallel pleats expanded correspondingly and lead to the increase of the pleats area. So according to the equation uh, of the capacitive's defini the definition, these two factors both leads to the increase of the capacitance output. So in our study, we choose the piezo-resistive type due to its visual fabrication, easy measurement, and simple signal processing for a low cost purpose. So our target is to synthesize a uh, cellulose composed materials, which possesses piezo resistive performance, and at the same time, easy to dispose or for us to recycle. So um, our object and methodology of this research is showing this schematic diagram. The key idea is to combine the functional materials, which is the graphite in this study, and with the cellulose materials, which is the cellulose nanofiber here, to synthesis a composite material that exhibits piezo-resistive performance via a proper synthetic process. Scorbrophyte is a very stable and eco-friendly carbon-based material that is low cost and non-hazard to the environment. Also, the cellulose nanofiber is water-soluble, different from the uh, micro-scale uh, fiber, which composed our daily paper. It is different. Uh, we uh, unbundle the uh, micro scales fibers to get nanoscale fibers, and the as obtained cellulose could be water soluble. And this made it easy to be separated from these functional materials, which is the graphite. 
So um, this figure A illustrated the fabricating process of the graphite and the lacenta fiber composed of thin fuel. I will use the GC fuel in the bill content. So um, cellulose fiber was prepared using the uh, temple oxidation process following the uh, previously mentioned research. So chemical oxidation was used to extract the cellulose fiber from the hierarchical bundle structure of the wood fiber. The obtained cellulose nanofiber suspension was then mixed with the graphite with a diameter range of four to six micrometers as shown in the schematic diagram. The mixture was subsequently ultrasonicated for eight hours to well dispersed into the solution. The as prepared solution was vacuum filtrated and the solvent was extracted until there is no liquid on the top of the membrane. The vacuum was then released and the damper was first frozen at minus 40 Celsius degrees for 24 hours and then freeze dried at minus 40 Celsius degrees for another 40 hours until the solvent was completely removed from the damper. So because of the uh, directional ice templating, this composed, composite is expected to have well-aligned layered structure. So the cross-section is shown here in the uh, scanning electron microscopic image. We can see that the thin film cross-section has a very well-laminated structure. Such microstructures can help to realize highly sensitive pressure sensing, since the contact surface area between the graphites, or we can see the conductive roads in their circumstance grow quickly due to the presence of the stress concentration. So next, I will move on to the preliminary results of this work. Um, so um, we first characterize the transfer response of the sensor. The as prepared GC film were cut it into pieces of six times 10 mill millimeters and attached to a gold into digital electrodes for further testing. So figure A shows the piezoresistant behavior and the sensitivity of our pressure sensor at the loading, uh, ranging from uh, 0 0.05 to 100 kilopascal. So um, when there are gaps between the graphite, um, when there is no pressure loading, so therefore the pressure sensor exhibits a relatively low conductivity under the release state. When the thin film is subject to external pressure, the contact resistance among the graphite flakes change under pressure and release states. So moreover, the sensitivity profile can be divided into three regions. The mechanism underlying this trend is that when the pressure is low, the increase of pressure will lead to a significant change in the interspace between the conductive graphite flakes, resulting in high sensitivity. And when the pressure load further increases, the compressibility of the thin film will decrease and the change in the conductivity will be insignificant. In addition, we have investigated the sensitivity of uh, different graphite and cellulose and fiber mass ratio, and the results are plotted here in figure B. The film with higher graphite so, uh, ratio shows uh, better sensitivity, but it is worth mentioning that the further increase of the graphite content will lead to a significant decrease in the flexibility of our device. Additionally, we uh, investigated the real-time pressure sensing performance and the repeatability of our cellulose nanofiber-based pressure sensor. Uh, we can see that uh, under four different uh, pressure range, it, it responds well and repeated well. Also, the response and recovery time under 50 Pascal is measured to be 100 milliseconds and 95 milliseconds, which is sufficient to multiple application scenarios. Also, we have tested the potential applications for our devices being the wearable application. So the first is we use a constant finger touch on our top, top of our device. We can see that the per, uh, pressure generated during uh, touching can be detected every time. And also we uh, placed our device on the joint of human elbow, uh, our human elbow joint, and every time of bending, our device could respond to it. Also, the uh, as prepared uh, GC film shows excellent mechanical strength uh, because with a size of 0 0.8 times 2 centimeters, it can hang up a 100 gram counterweight with no obvious deformation or cracking. And also the device shows uh, good flexibility because it can be twisted and bended. Finally, uh, we have demonstrated the recycle and the disposable of our devices 
Uh, first, we use the uh, combustion process to dispose our device. You can see that the cellulose content could be carbonized quickly, and then the device would turn into ashes, which is stable and environmental friendly. Also, uh, because nanocellulose composite is water soluble, so we can immerse our whole device into water, and then after 30, uh, around 30 minutes, the cellulose will be completely dissolved, and the graphite could be collected through centrifuge and recycled for further utility. Okay, so I'll summarize my work here. So uh, a flexible and eco-friendly pressure sensor composed by cellulose and a fiber and graphite was successfully fabricated through a piezo and efficient method. So owing to the intercalation structure of the cellulose and fiber and graphite, the SMAKE sensor achieves high sensitivity, fast response, and good repeatability. Additionally, the application in human motions were demonstrated. This work renders new insight into the design of eco-friendly uh, electronics with good sensing performance, low cost, and easy deposition method. So also, we want to mention some of uh, the improvements that is uh, required in this work, also some other future works. First is the uh, we need to enlarge the sensitivity area because we can see that the range for the highly sensitivity is only limited to 0 point, uh, 0 0.05 to 50 Pascal. So to do this, we need to increase the uh, distance, uh, the compression distance. So uh, one of the very common methods is to turn the thin film into aerosols. Uh, a lot of research are uh, leading this aspect. Also, uh, the package of the device, as we have mentioned before, all the cellulose devices, regardless of paper base or nanocellulose or cellulose crystal base, uh, it is all water soluble and uh, uh, it is all um, hydro hydrophilic and also the waterproof is very essential for this kind of device. Only if we can like waterproof uh, and package the whole device, uh, we can get a long-term performance uh, for the uh, cellular space device. And also the anti-deformation performance should be demonstrated because this uh, study, we haven't really like uh, pressed or bending this device for uh, several thousand cycles and then see the performance of it. And the anti-deformation uh, performance is very essential for all the wearable devices. And the last one is the uh, utility of other functional materials, because here we just propose some uh, concept, like, um, because for, for us to achieve a fully degradable device, I think there is still a very long way. And in some uh, aspects, uh, achieving the fully degradable, not really being so carbon or low carbon footprint. So uh, uh, in the other way, uh, combining the uh, functional materials that could be recycled with the uh, green material that could be like dissolved or degreed and provide us with a new idea of how to uh, fabricate this kind of uh, recyclable or degradable devices. So uh, here is some reference in this PowerPoint. And thank you for listening and welcome for the questions.